Good morning and welcome to worship at First United Methodist Church on this Christmas Sunday. We are glad to welcome you and pray that you will know the joy of the Lord in your heart and in your life. We're thankful to have our music team and our tech team here to serve you and be with you today. And we especially welcome Miranda Hoffmeister, who is going to sing a special to, uh, this morning uh, called Mary Did You Know? So if you're thinking about Facebook book surfing, forget it. Hang in there. You're going to hear some good stuff today. We welcome you to worship. But one of the things I would like to tell you about shortly before we dive into worship today, I want to talk to you about a man that I read about this week. He was 81 years old, and he went out into the streets and began to collect money for people that are hurting right now people who are unemployed, people who need clothing, people who may need uh, just any number of things, food. And he went out in for five straight days, uh, very cold weather, and eventually he had to stop because he became ill. But during those five days, he was able to raise $100,000 in order to uh, give to the poor and needy. The person I'm talking about is John Wesley. John Wesley believed that holiness means an eye toward the poor. Where did he learn that? He learned it from Jesus, and he learned it from singing Mary's song, which we are going to hear and look at just a little bit today. Welcome to worship. Today marks the fourth week of Advent. This is a season that holds space in the dark. All season long, we have been waiting for the ways Jesus comes into our midst. We've been waiting for God's hope, love, joy to our We have been waiting for, for God to show up in our midst. Today, we focus our hearts on a holy announcement, the declaration that a new revolution is dawning, a revolution centered on peace. Peace that subverts corrupt power structures, peace that preferences the least popular, peace that comes in the night with a song to you. Today, we light the fourth candle of Advent, the candle of peace.
Good morning. I am so glad to be here with you guys this week. Um, I have a couple of packages here, um, but I want to talk first about um, musicals. I love musicals, and one of my favorites is The Sound of Music. And you might have heard the song, My Favorite Things. It's sung by the lead um, actress, Maria. And in the, in the song, one of the lines is one of her favorite things is brown package brown paper packages wrapped up with string. So I have a brown paper package. And now you might be thinking, well, why is this exciting? It's boring, it's plain, especially when you compare it to something like this. A lot of us are gonna see packages under our Christmas trees this week that look like this. Not so much like this one. Um, but, uh, what if there was, what if you woke up and you saw under your tree a package like, like this brown one? Would that be the first one you reach and grab? Probably not. Many of you, and me included, would probably go for either the really big one that's wrapped up really pretty, or like a small one in comparison to this that's wrapped up really pretty. Um, you know, I think that that's why a lot of us when I think about packages, I think a lot of us have really missed out on the true gift of Christmas. And that's God's gift of Jesus. When Jesus came, he wasn't wrapped up in a beautiful package. He wasn't given to us in a beautiful, maybe what you would assume he would be, done, he would be given to us. His mother was young. She, was, um, she wasn't married. His earthly father was a poor carpenter. And he was born in a stable. He was born where animals live. And after he was born, he was put into their feeding trough, a manger, where they eat out of. Now, that doesn't sound very cool, right? It doesn't sound very kingly or um, even like you would expect a savior to be born in that way. But it was the greatest gift wasn't it? It was the greatest gift that the world had ever seen. It was the greatest gift that the world had ever known. It was the gift of salvation. And that's a big fancy word for um, being saved. It was the gift of salvation. And it had your name on it. 
And it had my name on it. And it had your mom's name on it and your dad's name on it and your grandparents. It had everybody's name on it. The Bible tells us that when Mary found out that she had been chosen to be the one to deliver God's gift to the world, she was filled with joy. She hurried to, her home, to the home of her cousin Elizabeth, and she um, told Elizabeth the good news. And when Elizabeth heard this, she exclaimed in a loud voice, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. You are blessed because you believed in the Lord, and you believed that the Lord would do what he said. Well, we know that the Lord has fulfilled his promise. He sent us the gift of his love. But some people are so busy unwrapping the beautifully wrapped packages that this world offers that they've missed out on the greatest gift. And maybe it's because it came wrapped in a brown package with a ribbon or with a piece of string. Will you pray with me? Father, we are so thankful that you loved us so much that you sent your only son to be our savior. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This is the final Sunday of Advent. But it is not the final time that we get to come together and worship this great holy day of God coming to live among us. This Thursday night on Christmas Eve, we will gather in person at Memorial Park at 5 o'clock. There will be candles and communion and caroling. So I invite all of you, tell a friend, tell a co-worker, tell a neighbor that you meet to come at five o'clock to Memorial Park where we can come together as a body of faith and celebrate and remember the reason that we all celebrate this time of year. On this fourth day of Advent, our reading comes to us from the Gospel of Luke, chapter one, verses 46 through 55. This is often called the Magnificat Mary's song of praise. Hear Mary singing a praise to God for what he has done for her. And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their innermost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel Remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. This is the gospel of the Lord. Luke has been called the musical gospel. Look around in Luke when you get a chance this week. We have a lot of church music that comes out of the Gospel of Luke. Canticles that the church has sung for hundreds of years. The song of Mary, which Pastor Rochelle just read, is probably the oldest Advent hymn in the church. It has been sung since the 6th century. And it has been covered by such greats as Bach and Mozart. It has clearly intrigued us. There is something there that has pulled us in. I think Mary's song began to take shape and form when she visited her cousin Elizabeth, who also had a unique pregnancy. When she was there, the Holy Spirit was moving. In fact, 
the Holy Spirit moved the baby in Elizabeth's womb. And there was a prophetic announcement made by Elizabeth over Mary and her son. So the visit to Elizabeth precipitated the work of the Holy Spirit and Mary came out of that visit inspired by the Holy Spirit to be more than a awestruck teenager who just met the angel Gabriel. She comes out of that visit in Luke's gospel as a prophetic herald of the good news. My soul magnifies the Lord. What a great way to begin a song. And we know that God has done a marvelous work in Mary's life. Even though she is lowly and humble, God has raised her into blessedness. And Luke wants us to know that this represents a fundamental shift in history. The Mighty One, God, has taken the side of the lowly and things are going to be turned upside down by this God who has sent His Son. The established order, it's going to be rocked. And God has the power to do it. God has the power to bless and God has the power to scatter the proud and bring down rulers who oppress the poor. God has the power to lift up the poor ones and to fill the hungry and to show mercy to those who really need it and to keep the covenant with Israel and his people. So the Son of the Most High God has come to set in motion God's saving work. And that, my friends, has to be good news today, especially to the 8 million Americans who have fallen into poverty since this summer in this country. This is a word of hope to the lowly and to the poor ones. God is coming to town, not Santa Claus. One of my favorite Old Testament professors says there is an argument that goes on in the Bible all the way through it. He said it's, it's a tune, it's a lyric. And he said it's, they compete. One is the lyric of scarcity and the other one is the lyric of abundance. The lyric of scarcity is the way we measure life and our future based on what we can do with our resources and our abilities. And a scarcity attitude leads to small-sized dreams and enough bread to feed only ourselves and our family. But the lyric of abundance asserts that in the hands of a generous God, a resourceful God, there is enough bread to feed, let's see, 5,000. Mary and the early church staked their lives on the lyric of abundance. God is the mighty one. God is enough. God can be trusted. We can be confident and safe in the Lord. And so maybe this morning we say, can we possibly sing along with Mary? My soul magnifies the Lord. And maybe it's time to stop living under the lyric of scarcity and start living under the lyric of abundance. 
Because in God's hands, a little becomes a lot. And nothing is impossible with God. God, in Mary's song, which Luke brings the gospel story to a grinding halt, just so we don't miss this, God is about to go full on mighty, folks. Mary's announcing that fact. The world will never be the same. The mighty one is going to lay bare his arm on behalf of the poor and the lowly and the powerless and the oppressed. John Wesley believed that. That's why he went out begging in 1850 as an 81-year-old for the poor. He thought that was one of the most important ways we live out of holiness in our lives. Holiness is for others. But this song is also a stark warning. In fact, there have been countries in history that have not allowed Mary's song to be sung because they were afraid it might lead to political uprising. But it is a warning. It is a warning to all those in power. It is a warning to the church itself. You will be scattered, proud ones, if you do not care for my poor, for the poor ones, for the lowly. Bishop Wilkie used to say that unless we know a poor person by their first name, we have not followed the teachings of Christ. Mary returned from Elizabeth in the power of the Spirit. And she gave us this song. Does it not remind you of her son who in just three chapters later returns from the wilderness filled with the Spirit of God and speaks these words in the synagogue in Nazareth. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for prisoners, recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of our Lord's favor. Yes, that sounds like Isaiah, but it also sounds like the song of Mary. That's a song where our souls magnify the Lord, but it's also a song of hope and warning. God will stand up for the poor. The poor and lowly are favored by God. And woe unto us who do not care for the lowly. Hear the song, sing the song. This is one of our songs of Christmas. Did you know that your baby boy 
boy would one day walk on water. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has This child that you delivered will soon deliver you. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would give sight to the blind man? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would calm a storm with his hand. Did you know that your baby boy had walked where angels trod? And when you kiss your little baby, you've kissed the face of God. Lord of all creation. Mary, did you know that your baby boy will one day rule the nations? Did you know that your baby boy is heaven's perfect lamb? And the sleeping child you're holding If you are able to join us on Christmas Eve in Memorial Park here in Winfield, we will be collecting an offering that evening, which will go to help our Helping Hands program here at the church. Many of you are familiar with our Helping Hands Fund. It goes to help those in our community that need help with rent or utilities, um, sometimes um, additional things that they may be needing around the home, Oftentimes, they need help finding a job or transportation, but helped, our church has helped to date in 2020. We've helped over 465 families, and we have dispersed over $76,000, not to mention the money from the Red Cross that we help to distribute each and every month as well. But this is a ministry of Winfield First United Methodist Church, and with the help of others, we're able to help those who may need heat during these cold months, or rent, or food. So if you are able to help, we would ask that you would contribute to this fund on Christmas Eve at Memorial Park at 5 o'clock as we join together and be the church looking out for those that are in need. 
Will you please pray with me? Loving and merciful, we come to you. We're reminded that when we come to you, we don't come alone. That we have so many friends and neighbors, brothers and sisters in Christ, both here and around the world, that we pray for one another. That our faith is not done individually. That we worship you together like a chorus of angels. We lift up our needs to you for one another, even for those we haven't met, because we are a community. And we thank you that you don't leave us alone. We thank you that you would love and care and desire to know us so much that you would come to us in human form. That you would show us how you would have us live. That you would show us how you would have us love. That you would show us how you would have us give and care and help those around us. God, give us the strength. Help us to shed off any embarrassment or awkwardness that may come when you place people in front of us that you would have us care for. God, give us boldness to pay for that meal of that young family in the restaurant. God, give us the moxie to just go out there and, and help those that we know are struggling, the people we hear about. And may us not do our good deed with our camera in one hand and a dollar in another, but let us do and work and love for you and only for you and not for how we're seen by others. God, hear the cries of those who are struggling at this time of year, whether they be poor in spirit or poor in their bank account. Fill the needs in surprising, crazy, miraculous ways, in ways that can only be attributed to you, God. Continue to provide for us as you always have. And God, remind us each and every day the teachings of your son who came to us and lived among us. Just as he taught disciples how to pray, we pray today, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. In response, please join me where you are in lifting up the doxology to God. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. And before we sing our last hymn together, I want to do a shout out. To uh, Mark Olney, who's coordinating the local bell ringing, raising money for the needy in our area, and for fellow lover of the song, Kent Miller, who's currently right now singing the better song, Ringing at Dylan's. So if you have the opportunity, join, get a hold of Mark Olney uh, to help in this, in this effort. 
Now let's join together as we sing our final celebration together. Hark the herald angels sing. Sinners reconciled, joyful are ye nations rise, join the triumph of the skies with angelic hosts proclaim Christ is born in Bethlehem. Hark the herald angels sing glory. By high is heaven adored, Christ the everlasting Lord. Late in time, behold him come, offspring of a virgin's womb. Veiled in flesh, the Godhead see, hail the incarnate deity. Please with us in flesh to dwell. Jesus, our Emmanuel, hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Hail the heavenborn Prince of Peace, hail the Son of Righteousness, light and life to all he second birth, hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Okay, right where you're at at home, I, I want you to know, poor and lowly ones, God sees you. God's about ready to turn this whole thing upside down so that the poor and the lowly know the great resources and power and supplies for our daily life that the God can give us. Mary was lowly. Her song is a, is a testimony about her own life. And so right where you're at, can you say with me today, my soul magnifies the Lord. Let's see how you do it. That is a beautiful praise. On the other side of the coin here today, though, you who are in positions of power, church, beware lest you forget the poor. Beware those who oppress the poor. God is powerful and will scatter the proud and the oppressor. Hear these words and let's live with the lyric of abundance in our life because nothing is impossible with God. Mm -hmm. 